Good morning to all. Today I am here to share a speech and a presentation on the topic today commemorate 6th August 1945, the day when an atomic bomb was dropped on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima, followed by another dropped atomic bomb on the city of Nagasaki. It is the only instant in human history where a nation used nuclear weapon against another nation. The US President Harry S. Truman decided to use nuclear weapon against Japan. A decision which annihilated thousands of people, ironically in the name of saving thousands of lives from the unending war. The two cities were destroyed and casualties, mostly civilians, were estimated at around 2 lakh with many more people dying later from injuries and illness. The bomb called Little Boy destroyed 70 percent of buildings in Hiroshima and generations suffered due to the effect of radiation. So friends, let us all take a pledge today that we will always work together towards spreading the message of mutual respect, peace and harmony and will never endorse any acts of violence. I am concluding my words. Thank you. So next is my presentation. So let us go to that. It's 8.14 a.m. on August 6th, 1945 and you're about to live through hell. But for now, a brilliant clear day is getting started morning traffic and crowded streetcars go by, and you arrive at work, a large modern office building. Earlier in the morning, there was an air raid alarm, but by now those are so common that they hardly register as more than routine. And besides, the all-clear has come through. Only a few planes were spotted, meaning this likely wasn't a bombing run. There's no real reason to believe that this day would be any worse than the last. Other Japanese cities, notably Tokyo, have taken serious hits from bombing, but so far your city, Hiroshima, has been comparatively fortunate, all but ignored by the American B-29s. The total warfare Japan has been waging for over a decade has affected everyone in the country in some way. When you were younger, you'd served overseas yourself. Now all these years later, it's almost surprising that you've been spared the worst tragedies of the home front. Most of all, you pray that the war will end before your son is old enough to fight, or daughter to be widowed. For now, like the other teenagers, they've been occupied with civilian defense, helping knock down old buildings to make way for military vehicles in the event of an invasion. A minute later, 8.15 am, you step into the lobby of the building, and then the world changes. An incredible yellow light, like the flash from a camera, blazes all around you, and everything around you becomes empty white. You're sent flying and you feel, pe and you feel pieces of debris strike you followed by the deafening boom as the sound from the explosion catches up. You slam against the floor and lose consciousness, probably just for a moment, you're not sure. You know you need to get up. Did you break any bones? No time to consider the situation. No one else is in the lobby with you, but all of the furniture has been blown to one side of the room along with your body. You push yourself up and step back outside through the door that's now missing all of its glass. You check all around yourself and see what you're up against. In front of you is a wall of fire and it seems to be growing. You turn to run the other way, but now the wind is against you and the glass shards and pieces of rubble fly back toward the blaze in the most powerful storm you've ever felt. You duck back into the doorway and watch as anything that can catch fire does. Somehow you'll have to fight the tremendous windstorm. As you push forward, you catch glimpses of people who's been out.